episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where Gym Aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. Hey guys, Evan from Gym Aware. We're really happy to be supporting Coach DeMayo's podcast series once again. For those that don't know, our main product is Gym Aware. It's the gold standard for measuring performance and implementing velocity-based training in the weight room. It excels in busy team training environments, and for many coaches, it's the Swiss Army knife of their toolkit. The Gym Aware is used for athlete profiling, jump testing, fatigue monitoring, and for listing within velocity zones. The system provides real-time feedback on individual targets, plus it's got an impressive range of leaderboards. Now, for those that are after a VBT device that's affordable, for the individual and for smaller groups, we recently released our new laser-based product, Flex. Importantly, it's been independently validated and proven to be both accurate and reliable. So if you're interested in either product, or you want to learn more about the velocity-based training and how it can help you as a coach, Check out our website or contact us directly. So in the meantime, we trust you enjoy the Coach DeMayo's podcast, Outside the Rack. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 91st episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper in the minds of top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the doctoral researcher, at the University of Pittsburgh, Patrick Peterson. Patrick, man, great to see you. Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, happy to be on, Jay. Thanks. Yeah, man. Well, since the last time we got to chat a bit, there's been a, a new location, a new role, a new outlook on everything when it comes to development and moving forward. So before we get too far into it, brother, who is Patrick? Yeah, yeah, so... Of course, it's been a while, so I'm happy to be here and catch up. It's crazy, not 91st episode of these. Um, really, really awesome for you, Jay. That's that's great stuff. Uh, yeah, so I grew up in Massachusetts. Um, from there, I went to University of Massachusetts Amherst, studied kinesiology, uh, went on, stayed in the uh, strength and conditioning, sports science realm of things. Uh, from working with football and hockey there as an intern, I went to University of Denver, did the intern thing there for a while. Got my master's, went to University of Minnesota for a few years, worked under Cal, and then uh, most recently Army West Point in a similar role. Um, and now, uh, as of the last year, I've been at University of Pittsburgh, um, doctoral student researcher in the Neuromuscular Research Lab and Warrior Human Performance Research Center. Um, that's where I spend a little, about half my time, and the other half of my time, I'm, I'm working with uh, University of Pittsburgh Panthers football team helping out uh, Coach Narduzzi, Coach Stacchiotti, all his awesome assistants there in strength and conditioning, um, our athletic trainer, Dale, and his awesome assistants, and our uh, new dietitian, Taylor Taylor Hughes, who's been, who's been great. So just trying to help them out with all the data streams they have incoming, um, you know, building out reports and stuff. So it's been a, been a great year one with those guys. I think uh, it's cliche to say it but we got an awesome team um both of practitioners and the athletes themselves some really some really great respectful guys who are uh who are gonna go far so yeah it's, it's an awesome awesome thing to be a part of i love that dude and the, the fact that you're still in the mix while you're also doing all that other stuff has got to be some some days man yeah days nights mornings <laughs> Um, it doesn't slow down. I was, uh, I had a, a rough couple of weeks during like our midterms this, this past semester. But, um, like I said, the, the staff I get to work with football, they're awesome. They're really understanding. They're like, Hey, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to balance. I came in on like two hours of sleep one day and, uh, 
coach staff was like, Hey man, what are you doing here? Like, you know, don't, don't worry about the force plate stuff right now. Like take care of you. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's a really great collaborative effort between the lab and between athletics here. It's kind of coordinated by coach stack, coach Narduzzi and uh, our athletic director there, assistant AD, uh, Chris Hoppy, uh, getting that stuff together. So, yeah. And I'm not the only one, so it's good. We got similar positions with uh, basketball and soccer here. So, you know, the other doctoral students, we kind of hang together and know when our uh, our surge times are. So. I get it, man. I think that's great, you know, especially that you can keep your foot in the door and expand in, in different realms and different ways with all of that. That's great. And it's it's really cool because as a guy who's gone – through multiple programs, learning from some absolutely top flight people, you know, your time at UMass and then in Minnesota and Denver and everything that you guys are doing with the Army was great. And now, you know, being in the mix with this, I'm, I'm fired up to hear this first answer. If you could describe a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Yeah, so, yeah, this is a, is a bulldozer of a question you got here. So obviously I think, you know, this past year has been a really formative time for a lot of people. Jay, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the answer to this question for your subsequent interviews will evolve around 2020 for, for a long time to come. But, uh, you know, outside of all the other things that we've learned um, with the development of the virus, the, you know, political climate, social injustice, income inequality and all these things, you know, I, I really learned in this last year, you can't let other people dictate your own value. Um, not just in terms of money or your contract value, not in terms of your employment, the logo that you have on your shirt, you know, your value as a human being and your identity. I think uh, the applied side of sport and exercise science, namely strength and conditioning, sports science, we really identify by our job titles, our logos, um, our models, our systems, our approaches, you know, I'm a tier guy, I'm an Olympic weightlifting guy, or, or I don't believe in acute chronic and like people get really, you know, emotionally entrenched in their, in their opinions and their values and their practices. But, um, you know, we often think that that's what makes us most valuable and it's just not true, you know, in, in reality, all of our practices and values are built on other work and it's, it's a medley of things as it should be. Um, but not only outside of that is, the dividing line between all these things is a lot slimmer and a lot smaller than we think it is. Um, I had a great conversation with a, a friend of mine the other day, we were talking about, you know, he's a dietitian and, you know, I'm in my realm and we were, we were like, Hey man, we always get so caught up with, with what we know and how much more we know than the coaches or how much more we know than the athletes. But in reality, you know, the difference is a lot slimmer than we think. Like, yeah, we understand the mechanisms and the finer details, but like when it comes to application, like there's really no difference in, you know, in, in the finer things that we know about vitamin C and collagen and, and our guys just know, Hey, we gotta, we gotta eat right and do things right every day before we go into the practice room. Right. So, so getting so entrenched in these debates, it's, it's really a, a moot point almost, but um, it's, it, it almost doesn't make sense to emotionally attach yourself to your ideas and, and let that become a part of your identity because it gives you a lot of undue stress, especially when things get shaken up, when you learn new things, um, when you're challenged, uh, when you, when you start to grow and it can, it becomes people either crumble under it or you, you rise above it and, and you become a new person. And I, I listened to, you know, or read stuff that I wrote a year ago, even a couple months ago. And I'm like, who was this guy? <laughs> you know, like, I was like, but that's how it should be. And, and you can't, you can't entrench yourself too far into it. And I guess what really taught me that was uh, I left a tough situation at a prior job. There was some things that happened outside of my control, um, you know, and there was a few months there where I was kind of in limbo and I didn't know. I was like, you know, if I, if I lose this job, like this was my big break, like, you know, am I going to go into something else? Am I going to become a different person? Am I going to, I was looking at some data science jobs. I was looking at, you know, taking a year to be a research associate and like doing all these things, getting out of this world. And the people I was talking to, my close friends had been in this world too, because we met through, you know, former coworkers, interns, whatever. And they're all like, why would you do that? Why would you leave? And 
I was listening to him and it was really, it, was, it put me in a deep depression. I won't lie. You know, it was, it was tough. It uh, knocked me down. I was like, yeah, maybe I'm not thinking right, but you got to remember with those people, they're projecting onto you, you know, they're rationalizing their decisions and their life choices onto you because they want you on their side because they don't want to think that they're wrong for what they do, whether consciously or subconsciously, it's mostly subconscious you know, as is the ego and the is it's what happens. And, you know, I just step away from that. And I finally, you know, just decided it wasn't it. Um, even before I got offered a job in another spot and, you know, I was interviewing in all these different places. I, I just stepped away from where I was at because it just wasn't right. Like it's causing me a lot of, uh, a lot of undue stress. And I got to say those couple, couple months, few weeks, whatever it was, I can't even remember, but that was the happiest time of my life. I was unemployed. I went on a, a camping trip and just got out into the open and I, I felt so detached from everything and so free and it was, it was awesome. And it, I realized it's because not that I lost my identity, that I left my job, that, you know, I, I wasn't in the world that I was just in at that time, however short or long it really was. Um, but I had found myself, like I had found who I really was, you know, what, what actually made me happy and, and work is really just an extension of that, you know, it always should be, you know? Um, so yeah, that was, that was what I learned over the last year, uh, big time, one of many things, but that had to be the biggest thing. I think that the part of that, that's really going to be hard for a lot of people to swallow is how so many people in this world chase a t-shirt and that's what really matters you know like when you see people in these big conventions and they're puffed up with their chest up because of the logo on their on their shirt as opposed to you know the, the person that's actually there yeah yeah absolutely and it's it's way easier to to do that you know because um you know it, it, i'm gonna say something here but like this this is an industry like sport and exercise science is kind of you know it's, it's male dominated like that's a known fact and there's some toxic masculinity in that and with toxic masculinity comes a little self-consciousness like i'm self-conscious i'll admit that 100 percent. so it's much easier for me to hide behind the logo and project that out instead of to say hey here's patrick here's who i am you know um so when you lose that it's a, it's a tough road to go down and I, I felt that firsthand yeah, I'm sure, man. But then you go into a realm and you're you're following a new path where you're going to change your first name from Patrick to Doctor. So to do that, you got to be a guy that's willing to dig and ask questions. And I'm not just talking about the kind of questions where it's what are our values and what's the most important worthwhile change in this force play metric, like questions. So let's get to number two, bro. If Patrick could ask one question and he knows he's going to get the answer to it, what would that be and why? Yep. Yeah, I got to applaud you, Jay, because, again, another question that threw me for a loop. And um, my knee-jerk reaction was, like you just said, like, oh, questions. Yeah, this is, this is my world. This is where I live in. And I started to dig into that, and I was like, you know what? do I really want to just ask and receive the answer to these things? Or is that part of my purpose is to strive and, and seek out those answers, both academically or professionally. So I had to rethink what I was, what I was thinking here. And so if I had to answer, get the answer to any question, what I would love to know is, you know, what's my legacy right now if I die today? Um, I think I know what I want people to say or feel about me in this life and if I left, but that largely that's out of my control at this moment because it's things that have already happened in the past that dictate that. So what would be nice to know is, is what is my legacy gonna be right now in this instant? And I could kind of use that as a rudder to steer where I go today or what I do tomorrow or how I build to kind of get to where I want to be or what I want to leave behind, right? Because, you know, memento mori, we all die. <laughs> everybody dies we're largely kind of just living to die i mean rich people spend millions of dollars every year trying to prolong their life because you know that's 
the only thing that's in front of them right now. And I think we all come to the realization that nothing's permanent and perhaps the only thing, lasting thing of us is our legacy. So I think that would be a really cool answer to get. Um, I'd like to think, you know, my contributions to the body of knowledge will be a part of my legacy. But again, that's something that I, I might not be able to control. Like, you know, I'm working on a paper right now on the IMTP. And if I were to die, when it gets published, you know, 10 years from now, there might be a new test that comes out that other people did creates a lot of buzz and who knows where that paper goes. So I, I got to start to think about other things, you know, my good partner to my significant other, have I been a good son, brother, uncle, or friend to the people I love? Was I rude to anyone today and why? And is a graduate student working for me going to get a good spot in his career? Am I helping him to do that? Am I, am I setting up people around me to, to live better and happier and healthier? You know, if someone told me what my legacy was today, that I could objectively evaluate those things right now because it's all guesswork more or less. And hell, if I could ask that question every morning and receive an answer, I think that'd be a pretty cool thing to wake up to and a pretty easy thing to steer you. Yeah, that would almost be like the ultimate gratitude journal, you would hope, you'd hope. Like a gratitude directing journal, I guess we would say. Yeah, 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 it would be. You would hope, I mean, and again, yeah. like there's, there's or it might like, be a, oh. <laughs> well, yeah. And some people need that, man. I, For real. Those moments, those whole moments are, are the ones that define me and define everyone where they're at and help, you know, kind of slap you in the face of the little reality from time to time. So I think, yeah, that might be a good thing to do. No doubt. Well, listen, man, let's get to this third one here because I think you kind of touched upon it a little bit already. But in a time and in a way, especially now with you going to school and working to help football, I mean, just doing anything with football is like an 80 hour a week job. So now working on your, your doctorate, I'm sure time to come back to neutral is few and far between. Mm -hmm. But when Patrick gets the opportunity, what's his escape? Yeah. When I get the opportunity, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I love hiking, mountaineering, camping, backpacking, uh, you know, there's some, there's nothing that would make you feel smaller than like battling your way up a 14er in the Rockies or being forced to turn around due to bad weather at the summit. You know, you work all this stuff and then you think like, you know, I'm, we're the top of the food chain, we're the best species and then nature knocks you down a peg. There's nothing like that. Uh, it's so sobering. Uh, like there's so much outside of your control in nature you just have to learn to be humble and you have to adjust around it um, and you know most people like to think about these these hiking and camping accidents ending and people getting the, the really brutal ones getting mauled by a bear or eating the wrong poisonous berry or something like that but in reality like most of the negative outcomes come from the people being a danger to themselves, just, you know, the guy from Florida that's unprepared and flies up to Wyoming to do a trip and just didn't prepare right or didn't know the, the dangers of being dehydrated, um, you know, miscalculating your distance to the summit and getting caught in a lightning storm or like all these things that in our unnatural world of the city is, is, a non-factor but are just so exasperated when you get outside of it and I think there's something there's something to say about you know how our society is just kind of like hyper controlled and hyper convenient so when you can when you're able to step outside of that and detach yourself from all things convenient by going outside again it just becomes really sobering and like a like a homing pigeon you know it, it lets you know where you're at it's a good gut check oh yeah because there's, when the things are out of your control, like there is, there's nothing to it, you know? And, it, and in those situations, like you've got to have such a grasp of what you're about to do that, and so dialed in that like you have no choice but to almost be in a, like a, a completely focused, locked in state because of everything that could go sideways yeah yeah it's so cool to be like to get that kind of gaze where like you're you're watching the ground in front of you but you're also taking in everything around you because you know it's both beautiful and terrifying at the same time and it's 
it's like this this high that you'll never find anywhere else you know at least you're not going to go to an IMAX 3D movie and get that um it's awesome and it's, a, it's like nothing else well, that's rad dude well I hope that that ends up being something you get to do soon here Patrick and you get a chance to breathe with this semester coming down to, to an end, but this is great stuff, bro. I'm glad you're doing awesome. It's great to catch up and it's great to see you again. Yeah, for sure. Jay, thanks for having me on. It's really exciting. You're doing some, some great stuff here with the podcast. So love to have uh, it. Appreciate that, man. Thanks so much. We'll be in touch soon. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, man. Cheers.